Let's talk about how and when we get diabetes. First of all, type 1 diabetes is a disease that people get usually between the time they're born and the time they're about 25 years old. It can be a little later, but typically by the time you're 25 years old, if you're going to get type 1 diabetes, you get it by that time. Type 2 diabetes is quite different. Type 2 diabetes is typically when you're 40, 50, 60, 70, even 80 years old, you're likely to get type 2 diabetes if you haven't had good eating habits and if you hadn't, haven't had a very active life. Sometimes culture, sometimes heredity can also play a part, but the primary relationship between type 2 diabetes and anything you do is the fact that your food has not been good and you haven't had enough activity. That's type 2 diabetes. Now let's talk about the difference between type 1 and type 2. If a non-diabetic eats a meal, let's say a hamburger, everything in that hamburger turns into some amount of glucose. The bun turns into some amount of glucose, uh, the mayonnaise does, the meat itself does. Uh, everything in that hamburger turns into some amount of glucose. When the pancreas gets a message, when you've got the glucose coming into your body, your pancreas gets a message that says there's glucose in your bloodstream. Pancreas, you need to produce some insulin so that glucose can get out of the bloodstream into the cells for energy, for short-term storage, and long-term storage. And magically, the pancreas produces exactly enough insulin to use that glucose. And when that glucose is used and gets out of the bloodstream into the cells, the pancreas stops producing insulin. It's like the thermostat on a house. You set it for 70 degrees, if it gets colder than 70, the furnace goes on, brings it back up. If it's hotter than 70, the furnace goes off and lets it cool down. That's the way the pancreas should work. But now let's take me, for example, as a type 1 diabetic. I eat that same amount of food and it turns into the same amount of glucose that the non-diabetic turned into in their, in their bloodstream. My pancreas gets a message that says, there's glucose in the bloodstream, pancreas, you've got to produce some insulin so this person can use that glucose. My pancreas says, sorry, I quit doing that 50 years ago. I don't do that anymore. So I've got to put that, that insulin in myself and I've got to judge continually every day. I've got to measure and I've got to judge to get just the right amount of insulin in my bloodstream to use just the right amount of glucose that I have and try to balance that. And that's what I've learned how to do very, very well in the past 50 years. Now let's take a type 2 diabetic, for example. What happens when a type 2 diabetic eats that same meal? If a type 2 diabetic eats the same meal, once again it turns into the same amount of glucose that it did for a non-diabetic and for a type 1 diabetic. But with the type 2 diabetic, the pancreas gets the message that says there's glucose in the bloodstream, pancreas, you need to produce some insulin. The pancreas essentially says, you know, I'll try but you've been asking me to work too hard for the past 10 or 15 or 20 years and I can't produce enough. I'm not gonna be able to produce enough insulin to use all of that, but I'll produce some. So the pancreas does produce some insulin, but it doesn't bring it all the way back down to the normal level of roughly between say 70 and 105 milligrams per deciliter. So just remember, you don't have to remember the milligrams per deciliter part, but the 70 to 105 is a pretty normal range. The pancreas can't quite get it down there, so maybe it leaves it at 120 or at 130 or 140 or 200, and it can't get all the way down to where it should get. That higher blood sugar in both the type 2 and also in a type 1 is what causes all kinds of health problems. Those problems can be significant. Those problems involve problems with circulation that can impact your feet and can make you not able to feel as well as you should with the feet, and it's called neuropathy, and also limit circulation in the feet, so if you end up getting blisters or sores or infections, you can't heal it very well. It also has uh, a big impact on the eyes. You have all kinds of little capillaries in your eyes, and those capillaries get clogged up, and they create what's called aneurysms and neovascular growth, and those pop. And I've had diabetics tell me they can feel it pop in their eyes. And that ultimately, without, without good care right away, can end up in bl with blindness. Uh, another big problem is kidney, kidney failure. Um, it, the kidneys are overworked when the blood sugar is too high. So those are problems that can be, 
can be created by type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes has always been considered the most serious of the two. But I'm going to put together an argument, and I do it in my books, that type 2 diabetes is more serious. And the reason is, type 2 diabetes, you're usually 40, 50, 60 years old when you get it, and it's the result of some bad habits, and it's harder to change. And a 50-year-old or 60-year-old's body isn't as healthy as mine was when I was 20 years old and got it. So I had more time to figure it out and to solve it. But if you're a type 2 diabetic, you don't have that kind of time. So you'll really need to pay attention to what I have to say in the next segment. In this segment, I want to talk about the simple science of weight loss and weight gain, how it happens. And this is going to simplify it so you'll understand exactly what makes you gain weight and how you can lose weight. Over and over, I hear the same sad reflections from middle-aged and older type 2 diabetics who are suffering from circulatory problems, kidney failure, serious vision problems, foot sores, or amputations. They've said, I should have taken my blood sugar more seriously, or I wish I had been more conscientious about my blood sugars years ago. Don't join that sad group of folks who ignored their blood sugars. Join the many readers of my book titled, your type 2 diabetes lifeline, who have reversed type 2 diabetes, lost weight, and are on a path to a healthier, happier, and longer life. Don't wait. You can do it.